very exciting, and I did not realize this. Your daughter is in town uh, this week because she is on Young Sheldon. She's That's an right. actress. Yes. And she plays Young Sheldon's mother, um, which is crazy because you play <laughs> old Sheldon's mother. <laughs> that is, I had no idea. This can't have ever happened it anywhere. It can never before. Have I know happened. that mothers and daughters have played mothers and daughters. Yeah. And maybe they played the same person in a flashback, maybe. Yeah. But this is on two concurrently running shows, yeah. both Mary Cooper. Yeah, in two, like, different timelines. It's yeah. insane. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, it, it, it's been fun. Now that young Sheldon exists, when I do go in every once in a while to do a Big Bang, it re I, I, look at, I look at Jim differently. I, I know him now as the little boy <laughs> on young Sheldon and, and, and the other kids on, on the family that they've cast. So you're, just, you're retroactively getting layers. backstory. Yeah. Yes, I am. I am. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, so congratulations on your Tony nomination. Uh, this is a fantastic... <laughs> Fantastic cast, Glenda Jackson, Alison Pill. Uh, were you familiar with the play when, when you signed on? To I it? had never done an Edward Albee play before. I had always heard the title Three Tall Women, I had never read it, and uh, signed on to do it blind because <laughs> I wanted to be in the room with Joe Mantello, the director, Glenda Jackson, the legend, Alison Pill, oh, I, who, who I've been dying to work with, and uh, also the producer, Scott Rudin, who, you know, is... is Knows what he's doing. Yes, he yes, does. He does. Yes. <laughs> um, and this is... I did not realize this about Glenda Jackson, your co-star. So she won two Oscars, and then she went into Parliament. Walked away. And then from, was in Parliament for 23 ran years. Ran for Parliament, lost the first time, I think, ran again, uh, served for 23 years, um, left that, and then decided to get back into theater and decided to do King Lear. She played King Lear wow. in London. <laughs> So she, she jumped right back in again. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and now she's on Broadway starring in this, and she's fantastic. Is it intimidating to work with someone like that, or do you just uh, learn from it, and is it wonderful? Well, I thought that I had pretty good stamina, because mm -hmm. I've been doing theater for a long time. You do the eight shows a week, and I think Glenda could do like a circus performer. I think that she could literally do about 13 shows a week. Uh -huh. You know, just stack them up, three shows a day. She has fantastic stamina. Stamina. She's got that voice that carries to the back row and beyond. What a what an awesome thing to be around. Yeah. You uh, you also found out and congratulations. You were nominated uh, for an Oscar this year for Lady Bird, in which you were fantastic. Um, and uh, and I know they're going to do a prequel of Lady Bird, and your daughter's going to play the mom yeah, again. Probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, so you uh, found out the first day of rehearsal that you were nominated for an Oscar. Does that affect how you prepare for a play on the first day, uh, getting sort you of... Know, well, I'll just always remember it as this fantastic day. These kind of days don't happen. My favorite place to be is in a rehearsal room on the first day of rehearsal and start, open up the script and everybody's around the table and, you know, you're really going to dig in and start the work. I love that. And that morning, the Oscar nominations came out. So when those two came together on the same day, I mean, how good does that get? Yeah, that's <laughs> really good. <laughs> really well deserved. You have, um, uh, you've been doing uh, theater for a very long time. As you mentioned, you were one of the founding members of the Steppenwolf Troupe yeah. in Chicago. Um, I was lucky enough to see shows there when I lived there. Here you guys are, um, this is a, a young group people might not recognize. There's young John Malkovich there, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gary Sinise there. And you were all pretty much actors of the same age when you started it. Right, yeah? right, right, right. And did that make it hard to uh, figure out who was playing what? Yeah, you can't find too many plays that have two, four, six, eight, eight actors of the same age. <laughs> yeah. You know, we ran out quickly. So what we had to do was um, play roles that we'd never get cast in before. So, like, I would play John Malkovich's mother in True West, and then I would bounce around and play his niece, 13-year-old niece, in uh, Fifth of July. There's Jeff Perry, too, Joan Allen. And, um, and so we got, I, we got better that way. We, we challenged ourselves, and our audiences in Chicago rolled with us. You know, they, they were yeah. really supportive. About, they were taken aback at some of the choices that we did, <laughs> but they, st they stuck with us. Uh, you, obviously, you have your responsibilities as an actor on stage, but you were also helping run this theater company. Was that a difficult yeah. time, or was well, that all thrilling? It was, it was fun. We just thought we would do it for a summer. Uh -huh. uh, and now I think we're in our 45th season, I'm That's not sure, but we were in a little church basement up in Highland Park, Illinois, and everybody just wanted to direct. Nobody, I mean, everybody wanted to act and be on stage. Nobody wanted to direct. So that was the, the job that somebody <laughs> every once in a while had to, had to take and also clean 
the bathrooms and tear the tickets. Gotcha. Uh, I did not realize this, but I'd see, I've seen your name in the past listed as a former cast member of Saturday Night Live. It turns out you did two things in 1981. <laughs> uh, that's, it's very hard to even tell that to you. Uh, you did a, a Man on the Street bit in yes. 1981. Yeah. And, uh, and then you did a piece with Catherine O'Hara, a short film, um, uh, which called Lori Has a Story, which I watched today and is fantastic. Yeah. Do you have any memory of it? I, that's funny that you sh should say that. It is like a dream. I see that there's proof. There's proof that yeah. I did do these things. But in 81, you know, I, it, I, Tim Kazarinski. Yes, from Chicago as well. Brought me yep. on and, uh, or suggested that I come on and, and, and have a tryout. And, and so um, they put me in that oversized uh, suit and, and, <laughs> and with a s small little crew and threw me out onto the street to say, would you take a bullet for the president? Uh -huh. And uh, pretty soon that there, there was a little crowd around us. You know, I didn't know what I was, I'd never been to New York. <laughs> I didn't know where I was, what I was doing. That is such a, a terror, so, that is the worst The casting. actor's nightmare, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's worse than you as a 13 year old niece. It's like, <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> Um, uh, but it was so exciting. I, well, I want, I'll make sure you can see it, because you got to go back and watch this. It was really, uh, really fun to watch. And Doug McGrath, who's a wonderful guy, yes. was also in that sketch yeah. as well. So, um, such an honor to have you here. I'm such a fan. Thank, uh, you. thank you so much.